Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Churches has spent the past 30 years chasing his father's wartime story. His father's book, 100 Miles as the Crow Flies, is the story of the greatest escape led by Ralph Churches, one of the great persuaders. Sworn to secrecy for 40 years, Ralph wrote his adventure after much prodding by Neil. Ralph is self-deprecating, old-fashioned and very charming. He walks us through one of the great adventures of the 20th century. Please welcome to the State Library of New South Wales, his son, Neil Churches. The freedom you plan for is the slogan that my father used in selling insurance. He was very good at it. He wanted me to do it too, thought I'd be even better at it than him. Nothing filled me with more dread or horror. He was snake oil as far as I was concerned. I was a radical green lefty in growing up in the comfortable suburbs of Sydney. I wanted to escape from his world. Escape was easy, but where do you go to? When I was about 14, 15, um, I was busy avoiding both mum and dad. Dad was out, mum was in the garden, and somebody came to the front door. Very elegantly dressed European gentleman. Wouldn't go away until mum came. And mum said, I know who you are and he wanted to talk to Dad. And um, eventually Dad came home and he produced a photograph from his pocket. And it's this photograph here on the cover of Dad's book. And the person on this extreme left is the bloke who was standing at the front door. His name was Cholo, that was his nickname. And the guy in the slouch hat is my father. And they're busy walking through the woods of Slovenia in the process of doing the largest single escape of prisoners of war of World War II. So for me it was a bit confusing. This bloke I didn't really get on with was all of a sudden a secret hero. How did that happen? It redefined to me what a hero was. My family had a story to be proud of. That was very, very odd. So the more I thought about it over the last 30, 40 years, I became aware of the shared arc between us. So what's essential about it beyond just it's a fantastic story? The great escape that the movie was made about was planned to have 250 people. 75 actually got out, three got back. Dad's escape, seven planned to get out, 105 got back. So um, how did my father do this? Well, first of all, he was actually quite used to escapes because he grew up on a very poor farm in South Australia and he didn't want to be a unpaid farm labourer for his parents or his brothers. So he worked out how to get off the farm by studying hard and becoming a scholarship boy to Adelaide High. Um, then the depression happened. And um, even though he was a scholarship boy and he'd stopped being bullied by his brothers, he'd been bullied by the other boys at school, depression came. Mm. Everybody was broke, how is he going to make money? So he cottoned on to that he could sell shoe repairs on commission to rich people in North Adelaide. And the skill he picked up there was one, selling, and two, was learning how to pick up accents. So if people, he recognised that the broad melee accent wasn't going to do him any good, so he learned to talk North Adelaide posh and was very good at it. So 1933, when he was doing this, Hitler came to power in Europe and Dad was politically motivated because he thought this was a really bad bloke, it was a really bad idea. And he told people about this for the next seven years, what a bad idea this was. So he eventually got a job in the bank and was posted to the middle of nowhere in the middle of the Air Peninsula. And when war came, he enlisted because he figured if he'd been banging off on about Hitler for seven years, he'd better put his money where his mouth was. So he enlisted and trained and was quickly picked out because he could sketch to become part of military intelligence and make maps. So got on the boat to Egypt, did some long range driving in the deserts of Egypt, then got sent over to Greece, did some map drawing, then the whole of the Greek campaign fell apart and he tried to row a boat to Crete and the Germans caught him, 
and they took him to a holding camp in Corinth where there were 7,000 other people and he got cholera and he suffered dysentery and then he went on a long train ride to Thessalonica and he got malaria and then he did a six day train ride to a place which he'd never heard of, which we now know as Slovenia. Now, during this time, he was not thinking kind thoughts about the Germans, but he also knew that he wanted to escape. So the first thing for him to do was to learn the language. So he started persuading people to have conversations with him in German. And he ended up being very, very good because of his ear at speaking German and then learning to write German. So within six months, he was the camp translator. The camp leader um, eventually had a breakdown because there was a Dear John letter that came to him that said not only was his wife not interested in him anymore, but he'd run off, she'd run off with his father. So Dad became the camp leader by unanimous vote. So that put him in a position of actually being in charge of all the Red Cross parcels, which meant that he had with his bank experience, the ability to set up a double entry bookkeeping system that accounted for all of the material in the larder with which you could bribe guards. And he set up a very efficient black market system. All on the while was about gaining information. And he eventually heard that um, there was a bunch of partisans operating in the area who the Germans absolutely hated, said appalling things about. And um, he figured, if the Germans hate them that much, they must be all right. How do I get in contact with them? So the next year was a process of how do I get in contact with the partisans? How do I get in contact with the partisans? A friend of his working out on one of these um, work parties that the Germans put them out on was working on a railway and was approached by um, a local Slovenian who said, um, would you be interested in talking to some partisans? And um, the conversation began. So over a period of three months, the plan was made to actually do an escape, meet some partisans, walk away from the camp, and a walk, away, walk away from the, the working party and head into the hills of the partisans. Who knows where they were gonna go, but they'll be away and hopefully the partisans would get them somewhere safely. So, to do this, Dad had to resign as camp leader. So resigned as camp leader, went out on the work party and um, was there for two weeks. Everything was set in place, walked away. Went for about a seven kilometre hike over some steep hills with the partisan guide, came to the village that the partisans had just stuck up from the Germans. They're having a party to celebrate how good it was to not be part of, under German control. There was a, a few drinks, a bit of a meal, a bit of a dance, some more drinks. And Dad went and talked to the partisan commanders and said, you're pretty confident that you can get us away. And the partisan said, yes, we get bomber crews out all the time. We have a line of escape. So that's why we said we can get eight of you out. So Dad said, all right, you're pretty confident. Would you be able to get 80 out? They thought about it and they said, well, you might be a German spy. And he said, yes, I might be. But w would you be able to get 80 out? And they thought about it and they said, yes, we'll do it tomorrow morning if you come with us, you're our hostage. If, if it's a trap, you're the first to go. And Dad said, well, of course, you'll scare the hell out of my blokes. So the next morning, waited for the train to turn up. The train arrived, everybody got off. Train went back around the corner. The partisans stuck everybody up. There's a bit of shock, but eventually they're headed off into the woods. Now for the next two weeks, they walked uphill, downhill, until they reached a place near what is now the Croatian border where the RAF had a secret airfield. And there was five planes ordered in from Italy, landed, flew them back to Italy. So that's what made it so successful. The partisans got them through all the German patrols and then got them to a place that could fly them out to safety. 
Now, the thing about this is when they got off the plane, they all signed the Official Secrets Act. They weren't allowed to tell anybody because lots of bomber crews were being shot down over Germany and they're all being given maps. If they landed over the Alps, they were to crash in Slovenia and the Slovenian partisans would get them out. So this particular escape route had to be kept secret. So 100 blokes had to keep this secret. It killed Dad. He loved to tell a good story, but he never actually broke the silence on this until Cholo turned up at the front door. So when Dad got back, um, he actually made a very successful time for himself out of selling insurance to people who spoke German in Australia. And um, he became the most successful insurance salesman in Australia for the Prudential Company for the 1950s and the 1960s. The key takeaway for me is that um, my relationship with Dad was based on the fact, before I knew this, was that the only time, good time we had together was when we watched Hogan's Heroes together. And I didn't understand why he found the joke so funny. Now I do. What I have done is I have taken my daughter on the walk across Slovenia together. And I, until last year, I was running a walking tour company of taking people on the walk through Slovenia. Now, in terms of what this book means to me, having done that experience and experienced that culture, is understanding that there is a whole range of things that you can do with, um, that are heroic and important without actually being um, a perfect person. My father was deeply flawed. Um, he had already had a number of things that caused a, a great deal of post-traumatic stress even before he joined the army and went away. And getting sick and doing this made him even more damaged. But he had a choice of either getting away or going back and getting everybody else. He had the opportunity to create strategic connections in the planning, to actually find out what the Germans were intending to do and by knowing the language of the enemy, being able to have conversations with them and treat them humanely, get the information that he wanted, even though he's being bombarded by fake news. So the other part of this is the partisans who he worked with were the only revolutionary underground army in Europe to actually defeat the Germans in a pitched battle and win their own country back. They did this because they had a clear vision of what they wanted their country to be and they had a clear set of values as to what they wanted the country to be. And so Dad's clear vision about the values that he represented and why he'd been against Hitler, even though he's politically conservative, that Hitler represented something that he didn't want to be part of. And the partisans saying, being clear about what they didn't want to be part of, actually created this astonishing escape story. Thank you very much for your time.